This is Lois Whaley for Women Today and Yesterday. Today, uh, being October 6th, we have a special guest with us who has come down from Columbus, and she's with uh, Susan Komen for the Cure uh, group in Columbus and also Athens. Mm -hmm. And this is Becca Thomas. How, how are you? <laughs> Thanks for having me. Thank you. I'm so glad you were able to, to stay after your event at the Women's Center and, and come in so that we can talk. First of all, let's talk a little bit about um, the event that you are uh, promoting here in Athens. Yeah, what I was talking about today is the upcoming Athens Race for the Cure. It'll be on Sunday, October 23rd on OU's campus, okay. and we're working with the OU School of Nursing. They first came to us about five years ago and wanted to do an awareness project for, for October, National Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And mm -hmm. I'm actually a fellow um, Bobcat. I went here about 10 years ago now. Um, but they, the professor of the nursing school reached out to me and wanted her students to get involved in a community service project. So. Um, to give you a little bit more background on who Komen is, um, so I work for Komen Columbus, we're a Columbus chapter, we're part of a national organization. So Susan G. Komen is a, actually a global organization. Um, we function to raise money to um, provide services um, like mammography, clinical breast exams, educational materials for women in underserved and unserved communities. Um, we also raise money for global scientific research. And actually Komen is the largest um, funder of global scientific research outside of the U.S. government. On breast cancer? On breast cancer specifically. Specifically. Yeah, right. exactly. And um, why is it called Susan G. Komen? Well, Susan G. Komen was a woman. She fought breast cancer several times um, when she was in her 30s, and this was 35 years ago now. Oh. Um, but when she was fighting breast cancer, um, she, her sister Nancy Brinker often went with her to her appointments and they'd be sitting in these you know drab beige waiting rooms there's no flowers or pictures and she couldn't really talk about her breast cancer you didn't have pink walks you know every month you couldn't mm -hmm. you didn't have a whole month dedicated to this disease you were you know she really felt shunned and she really couldn't talk about it so she asked her sister Nancy to do everything in her power to promise her to change this so women wouldn't have to feel ashamed that they had breast cancer in the future mm -hmm. so 35 years later we've grown into this global organization and and um, Nancy's first event, she had her uh, friends come over in her living room and they had their contacts on little, little post-it cards and they, um, they spread awareness that way. And so um, it's kind of grown since then. And, and in Columbus, our chapter has been around for almost 25 years now. 25 years. That's right. In um, Columbus itself. That's right, yep. And so we serve 30 counties in central and southeastern Ohio. So we raise money to fund programs that provide mammography, clinical breast exams, education services, awareness, things like that mm -hmm. for women and men who need it in our underserved areas. So um, we've actually funded more than $6, .6 million in southeastern Ohio um, since 2000. Oh, really? My yeah. Goodness. So when the professor of nursing approached me, we said we would love to work together because we've been funding this area for so long oh. and um, this area is a great need. You know, one third of our breast cancer diagnoses in our 30 county service area come from southeastern Ohio, from this region. I see. So there's yeah. a great need. So we divert a full third of our funding here to fund those programs that can, can help meet women's needs. Right. Well, that's, that's very important, uh, Shirley. Uh, but you are located in Columbus. Your own personal office is in yes. Columbus. Yeah, correct. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, <clears throat> I'm a big t-shirt wearer, and this t-shirt is actually says on the bottom here someplace, Columbus, Women's, Ohio, Health, Health Day. Women's Health Day. Uh -huh. Now, it doesn't have a year on it. But um, I've had it for quite a long time. <laughs> I might have even had it 25 years ago when um, you began your Maybe. work. I mean, when the group began its work. I don't believe that you personally began your work then. Not me. Not quite. I have been with Komen for almost eight years now, so uh, it's been around for years. a while. But Oh, mm -hmm. right. Good. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, tell us a little bit more about yourself personally. You mentioned in passing that you had been at Ohio University as a student. That's right. Um, yeah, I went to the Scripps School of Journalism here, um, graduated with a degree in public relations and journalism, and I worked for several years with, at a PR agency in Columbus, and um, I really enjoyed the work. I, it was fast-paced, it was fun, it was busy, um, but it's 2008 hit economic downturn, I was let go from my position. Um, oh. So um, through connections I had made, I came to work at the Komen Foundation. At the time, I didn't actually have any um, 
really personal ties to breast cancer. The mm -hmm. only survivor I knew was actually my husband's grandmother who had fought breast cancer many oh. years before. Right. Um, but since then, my eight years at Komen, I've met so many incredible survivors. Oh, yes. And even, you know, my mother, my sister-in-law, my grandmother, all these important women in my life that I wanted to stand up and, you know, do something for so they wouldn't have to fight this disease. And right. breast cancer affects one in eight women in their lifetime. So one in eight. One in eight. So mm -hmm. unfortunately, um, there will be someone close to me that will be affected someday whether it's myself or, or a family member, and I you know, feel like I'm doing everything I can to, to prevent that. Well, um, there was a time <clears throat> when breast cancer, in fact, practically all kinds of cancers were <sighs> thought of as a death sentence, mm -hmm. you know, when people knew about it. And I personally, my own personal connection with breast cancer when I was growing up long ago mm -hmm. out west, mm -hmm. uh, I used to spend summers at Lake Tahoe. Okay. And I first did that when I was five years old. Mm -hmm. And um, a lady saw me there and saw I was kind of like by myself sometimes and so on. And she discovered that my uh, parents were divorced. Mm -hmm. And I was, for the summer, I was there with my father who was working, you know. Mm -hmm. He was working in the uh, store uh, there in Tahoe City. And um, so I was, you know, mostly there on the, uh, just out on the wharf. Mm -hmm. you know? And she saw me and I looked kind of cute and all <laughs> that sort of thing, you know, five years old. Mm -hmm. So uh, she took care of me eventually uh, and as it happened, my father died that winter oh. in a Arizona, in Phoenix. Oh, gosh. I'm but um, she continued the connection. And I went every summer to Lake Tahoe for eight consecutive summers and stayed with her. Wow, that's wonderful. Her name was Violet Garner. Uh -huh. And I can recall, it must have been about uh, 1943, when I would have been about the uh, Ten years old or so, a little older maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, that um, she mentioned to a group of women who had come to have coffee, you know, with her, that she had a lump in her breast, mm -hmm. and she had people feel the lump, which was, you know, on the side. It was actually rather large. Wow. I thought. I mm -hmm. mean, you know, I, I felt it also, and and um, that was 1943. Mm -hmm. Well, um, she died in 1945, oh. so 1944 was my last year there, mm -hmm. and she told me, you know, one day that she would probably not be around the following summer. Mm -hmm. I was going to school at the time at eighth grade, but, um, you know, you never forget those things. Right, absolutely. As someone who's been very close to you. Who was and actually my uh, parents both have had both had cancer, mm. but it was colon cancer, uh -huh. and there are so many. It's so prevalent. And, and Nancy Brinker, Susan Komen's sister, wrote a book called Promise Me, and she kind of went through almost the history of breast cancer from the beginning, and uh -huh. and back in the 40s, and you know even I don't know 50s and 60s, mastectomies, you know, were rather crude surgeries, mm. and there wasn't a, a lot of information known about all the different types of breast cancers and it's just come a, such a long way and um, what we saw earlier was a few survivors sharing their stories and yes. one of them had very detailed photos of herself she going did. through the whole process yes. and it's it's really amazing to see you know the the types of um, surgeries you can mm -hmm. do the types of treatments that are available it's so targeted to there's so many specific types of breast cancer and that's some of the research oh. that Komen's been involved with to really pinpoint you know exactly what type that a person has and how to treat that and mm -hmm. and 35 years ago when Susan Komen was diagnosed um, if she was diagnosed at the earliest stages the survival rate was 74 percent and 74 74 today it's 99 99 percent so. so it's very very important for women to do self-examinations and check on their annual checkups with their doctors. And Absolutely. So we always say, know your risk, know your normal. Do you have a family history? Um, know what your body looks like. So if you've noticed any changes, you know, a dimpling of the skin, an irritation, um, maybe a puckering, or even a, a lump, a, a very common symptom is mm -hmm. a lump. Mm -hmm. um, talk to your physician right away. Mammograms are the best tool we have right now to detect breast cancer. Um, 
so we recommend at age 40 you start getting annual mammograms. However, if you have a family history, if you have other, other factors come to play, just talk to your health care provider and they'll be able to tell you uh, and, pr and provide a recommendation for, I see. for that. For whether you need to be checked more frequently. Absolutely. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it's uh, uh, like I say, at one time it seemed to be a, an automatic death sentence mm -hmm. when Violet Garner was uh, in the 1940s, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. I first noticed that she had a lump in her breast. You Absolutely. Know. She was an older woman. She was one of those people whose age you could never quite <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> never tell. But uh, she must have been uh, at least in her 50s, mm -hmm. maybe even 60s. Mm -hmm. But she had beautiful uh, auburn hair. Oh. And, uh, and she was, you know, I greatly enjoyed those summers so that I was with them. Yeah, it sounds she like such a warm husband. memory for you. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, those personal connections, you know, that, that uh, make a difference. Mm -hmm. but you mentioned that um, uh, Columbus is your headquarters, mm -hmm. and but the Athens is very important part of, of the Columbus area. Yes. Um, how many, are there, are there other areas in the state? There are, yeah. We are very proud of the fact that we say um, Ohio is covered in pink. So all 88 counties are covered by a Komen affiliate. Um, mm -hmm. There's Northwest Ohio, Northeast, and Cincinnati. And through all the different affiliates, um, we each have our service area where we raise funds, we support local community programs, and we all contribute to scientific research. So we all kind of function, I like to think of us as cousins. We're all independent, but we share ideas and mm -hmm. maybe what worked great at you know a race in Cleveland we can incorporate some aspect in our Columbus race or vice versa so uh -huh. and we all get together and collaborate every now and then we we do collaborate on statewide policy issues mm -hmm. um, the advocacy program you know we work together on that but otherwise we function independently well you mentioned that the uh, Athens event is going to be Sunday October 23rd mm -hmm. Is that a statewide event that day? It's not actually. All the Komen races happen at different times of the year. Oh, um, in Ohio, I think the majority actually do happen in the fall. Um, mm -hmm. In Columbus, our race is in May. So um, we wanted to give ourselves some time to space it out because the right. races certainly take a lot of time to right. put together. Um, but yeah, it's October 23rd and um, it's a second annual race and um, we love the community in Athens. You know, we love the potential and the collaborative nature of OU. and. Um, October being Breast Cancer Awareness Month certainly lends itself to, to just a, an atmosphere of awareness. And, uh -huh. and a lot of people do feel it, there's too much pink. You know, there's pink on the football fields, there's pink in grocery stores. But it's really an incredible thing that over 35 years ago you couldn't even talk about breast cancer, uh -huh. let alone not necessarily celebrate it, but really draw so much attention to it. And, yes. and look where we are now and, and how much awareness that's bringing to light. And, right. you know, maybe if someone sees a pink something in a grocery store, that'll prompt them to, to make that mammography appointment or to remind someone to do so. And that's right. kind of the goal. Mm -hmm. Well, we have some materials here that have the pink, pink that you mentioned. For that's instance, right. this self-awareness message um, from the... Uh, Susan G. Coleman Group. Yeah, it kind of goes through some basic things to keep in mind. Uh, know your risk. Talk to your family. Know uh -huh. your family history. Not just of breast cancer, but like you mentioned, other cancers. Uh, get screened. Talk with your healthcare provider about the frequency when you should start getting screened. Know what's normal for you. If you see any changes in yourself, make sure to draw attention to someone. Um, and make healthy lifestyle choices. You know, the most common risk factors for breast cancer are being a woman and getting older. Two things that we yes. often can't change. <laughs> but just maintaining a healthy weight, a healthy diet, exercising, yes. those always help. Always help. And there are things that might even be connected, although you can't see any direct connection, such as smoking. Right. Uh, the, while that is a very big risk factor for lung cancer, mm -hmm. it seems that smoking is considered a risk for other types of cancers as well. Yeah, it generally just doesn't go along with a healthy lifestyle. Mm -hmm. You know, um, putting those toxins kind of into your body isn't really going to do any good. Mm -hmm. um, and that doesn't always help. You know, I certainly know a lot of survivors who are very healthy and have breast cancer. And again, that just goes down to being a woman and getting older. Mm -hmm. But it's certainly will help in a lot of different aspects, help your recovery, help if you have to go through surgery or chemo, you know, have, having that um, kind of a strong body and a healthy constitution that just, you know, right. will help overall. 
Well, um, but I, I know that there's also a connection uh, with um, contraception, the use of uh, contraceptive pills that are hormone mm -hmm. involved. Well, and that's in some cases. Um, in some cases, There are right. lots of different types of breast cancer, and some breast cancer responds to different hormones. Um, I see. Estrogen mm -hmm. and other things. So that would be something, again, to talk with your health care provider, know your risk, know mm -hmm. if that's a factor. Um, I, I personally don't know. I don't come from a medical background, but um, that's just one thing to keep in mind. Yes. Well, long ago, um, when my husband and I were married, which is over 60 years ago. Wow, now. wonderful. <laughs> uh, we were married in Ann Arbor, uh -huh. Michigan. We were graduate students at the time and so on. And so we did not want to begin a family right away. Mm -hmm. And we went to Planned Parenthood mm -hmm. and got uh, help from them, which is why I've always been a very big supporter of mm -hmm. Planned Parenthood. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, but in those days, I think it was actually before the pill, you know, in 1954, um, the way that was used was uh, a barrier, you mm -hmm. know, um, a diaphragm. Uh -huh. And uh, so that's what we had. And even after pills came in, you know, I was a little suspicious. I thought, I don't know whether I really want to, to change my hormonal, uh, mm -hmm. which is how the um, pills work, I guess most of them work in some way uh, hormonally mm -hmm. to make a difference and, mm -hmm. and to keep persons from, women from, from um, conceiving. And then, uh, you know, after a couple of weeks, because the ovulation does continue, mm -hmm. apparently, then uh, to go off the pill for a while and um, during that time, you know, then the, you'll have your regular menses mm -hmm. so that uh, it, it, it's not like you're continually on, on the hormonal pill, but th that's the basic way that the pills work, I believe, at least mm -hmm. they, the first ones were definitely that way. Yeah, I think there's a lot of different options now. Um, yes. So it again, it's just best to talk to a healthcare provider and, and figure out all the ins and outs, right. and all a lot of them have varying measures of hormones that they have. So you can, and again, that's not a, um, you know, if you take this, you will develop breast cancer. That's absolutely not um, really a correlation. It's just something to consider. And again, talking with a healthcare provider provider right. will help you know, provide more education and peace of mind, I think, so people can feel comfortable with all those decisions. Yes, because uh, what works for one person might not work That's for right. another. That's right, yeah. And uh, interestingly, I know I've read somewhere quite recently, probably because this is October yeah. <laughs> with Breast Cancer Awareness Month, mm -hmm. that uh, there are s some pills in particular that seem to have been linked with with uh, not working or even perhaps increasing hmm. the risk hmm. of cancer, of breast cancer, um, so that you do have to be very careful to make sure that the uh, doctor, the Planned Parenthood, you know, whoever provides the information, um, make sure that it's something that would really work best for you. Absolutely. It right. kind of goes back to just being an, a knowledgeable consumer and knowing what you're getting into and knowing all the facts behind it. And mm -hmm. like you mentioned in October, there's there's so much pink out there. And, yes. you know, you might get drawn in by, oh, this product says they donate, donate <laughs> to breast cancer awareness and there's a pink ribbon on this and a pink ribbon on that. And um, we really encourage consumers to really look, look at that product. And does it say exactly how much is going to the organization? And does it list the organization? And is that organization credible? Have you heard of them? Can you mm -hmm. Google them and find out you know, their Charity Navigator rating? And with Komen, um, any product you see that benefits Komen, you'll see very specifically exactly how much goes to Komen. We like to be as transparent as possible. Oh, I see. And then you can always go on our website, komencolumbus.org, or even our national website, komen.org, and read you know, all the programs we're funding, all the research that we're involved with. Um, we just try to be as transparent as possible because there is a lot of pink out in October. And um, if you want to make an impact, I think it's best to kind of look into it a little bit before you just grab anything that's pink off the that's shelf. That's right. And 
I was quite impressed with the um, presentation that was at the Women's Center, where we met uh, a couple of hours That's ago, right. <laughs> <laughs> actually, uh, that uh, there was a sort of a warning about, um, you know, making it seem too ta-ta or something, you know, I'm not mm -hmm. too sure why ta-ta mm -hmm. was, uh, was uh, chosen, but, and then they were talking about second base, and yeah. uh, they had uh, posters that used these terms, mm -hmm. and showed a very well-endowed <laughs> uh, female, right. you know. Mm -hmm. um, but that some of the groups uh, spend so much money on just keeping themselves going, right. they don't spend as much money as they should on research and education. Absolutely. And that goes into really any charity you're going to support. You know, yes. look into their history and their background and how much goes to you know, their expenses and how much actually goes to the mission. And um, from Komen's perspective, 81 cents of every dollar for fundraising or mm -hmm. for donations or registration will go to our mission. Of that 81 cents, 75 cents, uh, or 75 percent, excuse me, goes to the local community programs, the local grantees we fund, mm -hmm. and the balance, 25 percent, goes to global scientific research. And mm -hmm. we list all the programs we fund on our website and how to get in touch with those programs. So if, um, you know, a woman in maybe Athens County needs a mammogram and doesn't have insurance or she can't afford her co-pays. There's programs that can help um, that can support help. her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, now, we spoke about the um, Susan G. Komen race on October 23rd, mm -hmm. which is a Sunday, but what is the hour? What time is it going to be? We have registration opening at 10 o'clock and I it'll see. be at the Walter Field House. At on the Walter Field House. Mm -hmm down by um, the football That's right. yep. stadium. And then we have our expo, which will have sponsors passing out samples and goodies. We'll have what we call Survivor Palooza. It's an area just for survivors with special goodie bags and refreshments and educational materials. All that opens also at 10. Um, and then we have a 5K run and walk that starts at noon. It starts at noon? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So you can come down, down early and get parked and settled and take part in the activities and then the run and the walk kick off at noon. <laughs> Well, as it happens, that's a very busy weekend oh, for really? me personally. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, I'm a little bit beyond the 5K uh, mm -hmm. because I use a cane, uh, not because I have real problems with my legs and hips and ankles, but I'd have a problem with balance. Mm. But, you know, I am kind of hobbling along with that cane a lot. Uh -huh. And so... Um, I thought it would be better just to give you an, a donation. That's wonderful. <laughs> well, we appreciate that as well. And you can well, always, we have what we call sleep in for the cure. So if people uh -huh. want to participate, but maybe they have um, another obligation that day, they can still register and get a t-shirt um, uh -oh, really? and not feel like they have to come. Yeah. Well, that's, that's nice. That also happens to be the same weekend that the women's group at um, the Unitarian Universalist Fellowship, to which I belong, mm -hmm. is having its retreat. Oh, so oh, I'm well, not enjoy. sure how much uh, I'll even be around in in the city uh -huh. um, on that weekend. But um, uh, it's very important that we know when and where mm -hmm. uh, the event will be here locally, mm -hmm. and that's uh, just about two weeks away now. Yes, it is coming up rather quickly. Um, yeah, so hopefully you'll start to see yard signs around the city and posters. Um, on our posters, we have two women um, who are honorary chairs this year. Um, they are both survivors. Um, one is named Cindy Aremus. She lives in Athens. Mm -hmm. She is a survivor of many years, actually, several different recurrences of breast cancer. Mm -hmm. um, she's been a volunteer for Komen. She's had fundraisers of her own before. Um, and the other woman who's on our chair is named Mary, who lives actually, I think, in Somerset, Ohio. And she actually um, benefited from one of our community health programs. So at the time, and I believe she found a lump, she was a single mom um, and kind of had to make those difficult choices of, you know, can I afford treatment or do I, I need to, you know, feed my children and pay for schooling and things. So mm -hmm. she was able to receive funding from a local program that Komen funds to receive her treatment. And now she's a survivor, thankfully, as well. Oh, so, great. Yeah, yeah, so they'll be there on race day. We'll have, um, like I said, registration is at 10, but 1130, we're having a little opening ceremony. So Cindy and Mary will be there and, you know, kind of you'll be able to meet them and wave with them and um, they'll kind of kick everything off. Where is the um, 
is, are you going on the bike path? What are you doing? Yes, the, let's see, the 5K run and walk um, starts on South Green Drive. South Green Drive. Mm -hmm. So it'll go in front of the stadium, in front of Walter Fieldhouse, past Ping, um, kind of behind, let's see, when I went to OU it was called New South. I don't know if they still call it uh -huh. New South. Some of the newer dorms are actually right. back there. South Green. Yeah, all, oh. all behind South Green. Um, they'll come out onto Elliott Street and then go to on Stimson. And then cut over on um, onto the bike path off of Stimson. Um, okay. We'll also and they'll come back to finish behind Payton Stadium. And we'll also have a one mile family fun walk. So 5K, if it's not quite your speed, um, we have a one mile walk, and that will be entirely on the bike path. I see. Yeah. Okay. And so we have maps all on our website as well. Right, and uh, the actual. Um, run or walk or whatever. Do you, uh, do you uh, encourage people to, to run? Whatever Is they're comfortable really with. Race? I mean, some people run. Yeah, some people uh, like to be timed and, and they'll be done in 15 minutes. They'll be, you know, before half people get started. Uh, um, but it's whatever you're comfortable with. Yeah. For sure. Running, walking, skipping. Well, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure that there's another um, event later in the afternoon mm -hmm. at 2, I believe. Uh, I believe crop walk is okay. scheduled for then. Mm -hmm. I'll have to double check on that, but um, that's my that's my belief. Um, crop walk is um, supports. Uh, you know, October has a number of different mm -hmm. things, including United Nations Day on the twenty fourth. Oh yeah, which is just the day after uh -huh. the uh, uh, Coleman race here in Athens. Mm -hmm. Um, but one of the days is um, October 16th is um, United Nations Food Food Day. Hmm. And so uh, for a number of years we've had a crop walk, as they call it, to raise some funds for um, food and agriculture organization of, of uh, the United Nations. Oh, great. So, Very worthy. And I think that's at 2 o'clock. Okay. And they usually meet right by the stadium and take a walk toward the hospital down there, mm -hmm. actually down the other direction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That would be. That's right. So I'm sure there would be, although uh, it sounds like by two o'clock, even the slowest of your... <laughs> Most people will be done by then, yeah, and we'll be pretty much cleaning up. So it could be a very fitful day for someone if they come out and do the race in the morning and stay for the walk. And yes, yeah. my goodness. Mm -hmm. uh, you can support two wonderful causes That's right. at That's one right. time, so to speak. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. All right. Well, I know that uh, you have to go on and uh, go to other events and so forth, and I will continue speaking about other things after you leave, but uh, tell us again where you're from originally. Sure. Um, I'm from a town called Greenville, Ohio, okay. and it's about two hours west of Columbus, um, mm -hmm. right on the Indiana border. Mm -hmm. um, Annie Oakley is from Greenville. Oh, yes. You've heard of her. Dark and County. Dark County, that's yes. right. Yep. Uh -huh. We have um, the KitchenAid factory store. There's a big Whirlpool plant in the area that makes appliances and the KitchenAid mixers. Oh, um, uh -huh. Let's see, Tecumseh Point is our other claim to fame. So, Treaty of Greenville. Right. Very small did, town. How did you happen to come to Ohio University? I was really interested in writing um, uh -huh. in high school, and I um, applied to the journalism school right, in the fall. Which was and very well known. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I was telling someone that that was the only college I applied to. I happened to visit OU on you know the most idyllic of spring days the previous year, and oh, I said, "This cool. is it. This is where I want to be." And <laughs> gratefully, that worked out. <laughs> right. Well, OU is such a really a beautiful place. It is. It's you very know, unique. Have you heard that we were considered the number two campus in the whole United States? After who? States? After um, I think it was a spa. I think it might was. Well, it was a small uh, college in California. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> and of course. Um, no sooner had that happened than they started to tear down the old <laughs> oh, campus gate. Oh, sure. Yep. Rebuild the campus gate. That's but right. It's, it's almost done. Is it? I drove by the other day and it was still under construction. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's almost done. Mm -hmm. and hopefully it will be done for homecoming. Yeah, I hope so. For the alumni coming back. Mm -hmm. Well, Becca, it's Thank you been for really having me. very nice. Becca Thomas works with Susan G. Coleman. Mm -hmm in Columbus, mm -hmm. which includes the uh, Southeast Ohio area, yep. 
and she's been promoting today, especially the October 23rd, which is a Sunday after uh, morning. You begin the uh, registration mm -hmm. at 10 o'clock. That's right. The actual um, racing or walking will begin at 12, mm -hmm. and you'll be going mostly on the bike path. Mm -hmm. Um, but they will have all the information at the Walter Field House, which is the new place next to the stadium. That's right. Yep. Right. You paid attention. That's correct. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've lived here for over 50 years, so wow. I'm pretty aware of the geography. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice to have you back. Thank up. you, Lois. I appreciate it. Okay. This is Lois Whaley for Women Today and Yesterday. And I just had a wonderful talk with a woman uh, from uh, Columbus uh, with the Susan G. Komen um, event, which does things for uh, breast cancer, both education and awareness, and also help to uh, people who are women who are in need, uh, perhaps, of, of something special. Uh, if they don't have enough money for um, some, some of the things which would be necessary for their survivalship as breast cancer um, people. And uh, that was Becca Thomas, who is from Dark County but is an Ohio University graduate. And uh, so I talked with her. Now I want to go on to speak of some other parts of, actually this is October, October 6th, which is not only Breast uh, Cancer Awareness Month here in October, but we have, as I mentioned a, a little bit earlier, um, such things as Crop Walk, which is going to be also on October 23rd, it will be in the afternoon, um, in all likelihood, at 2 o'clock. That's uh, what it's uh, done traditionally and has walked on the bike path. But uh, people get uh, um, pledges, you might say, of donations for uh, helping with hunger problems around the world. And October is chosen for Crop Walk specifically because of Food and Agriculture Day, which is the United Nations sponsored time for the Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO, one of the many specialized agencies of the United Nations, which of course is also celebrating um, on October 24th, United Nations Day, and uh, the fact that uh, 70 years ago, it'll be 71 years ago this year, the United Nations was founded at the end of World War II um, in San Francisco. The charter was written. I can remember that time. I was actually in eighth grade uh, in Hawthorne, Nevada um, at a naval ammunition depot that was making um, munitions for World War II, specifically for the uh, Navy, for uh, submarines, and for uh, carrier-based planes. The um, little townlet, you might call it, that had been specifically built to house the workers uh, in the ammunition were, the avenues were named for uh, aircraft carriers, including one of them I remember was the Hornet, from which uh, the uh, plane took off that uh, hit Hiroshima in mid-August, in well, early August of uh, 1945, and helped to bring the uh, World War II to a close after the uh, devastation in Hiroshima on August 6th, and then the second atomic bomb that was dropped on August 9th on Nagasaki. And those are something that I can remember from the headline times of World War II. And I remember 
VJ Day, which was victory over Japan when uh, Japan surrendered unconditionally on August 15th, although it took a while to, you know, actually get the um, U.S. forces into Japan and, and arrange for the, the end, actual ending of hostilities on World War II. Well, that's a little bit of, of history that I personally remember. People who've watched my show know that I'm very interested in, in history in general and, of course, in women. And uh, that's why I call my show Women Today and Yesterday. What you may not know is that um, it's been 10 years since I first began doing this show because it was in September of 2006 that I first came out here to Richland Avenue to Channel 9, known in those days, I believe, as Channel 23, uh, to the Athens Community Television Time Warner Cable, which, uh, as a part of its contract with the city of Athens, provides the possibility of local shows being done. And I'm sure that many of my viewers have uh, tuned in to shows being currently taped, uh, such as uh, my friend Alex uh, Ross, uh, who just uh, the other day uh, taped uh, the uh, talk, or part of the talk certainly, of former President uh, Bill Clinton, who visited Athens on the 4th um, Tuesday, just two days ago, to speak for his wife, Hillary Clinton, who is a candidate for president this fall. So, uh, uh, well, it's, it's been 2008. I was on the, the air in those days. Um, Hillary Clinton also ran for president uh, as a Democratic nominee in 2008 against, uh, they were, were, were both senators. Uh, Mrs. Clinton was a senator from New York State in uh, 2007, 2008, and her primary opponent was, of course, uh, Barack Obama, who was a senator from the state of Illinois in those days, and who eventually won the uh, Democratic primaries and became the nominee and was elected in the fall of 2008 and became President of the United States in January 2009. And he's getting very close to the end of his term in, in office, President Obama, having um, defeated two Republican candidates Senator uh, McCain, who ran in 2008, and then in um, 2012, uh, Mitt Romney, who had been governor of uh, Massachusetts. So <laughs> it, it, it's always an interesting time, the uh, political years, especially the presidential years because there are a number of people who only vote for a president. Now that uh, means that they would only vote once every four years because its presidential term of office is four years. And so that is why 2016, 2012, 2008 were all presidential election years. And then the president uh, takes office the following uh, January. And so uh, coming up very soon will be the um, November 8th election. It's on a Tuesday. That's the traditional time to have the um, election for president. It's always on a Tuesday so far. I think though that there there is some talk about the possibility of having a a time like on the weekend or perhaps making uh, the Tuesday that's a presidential election day a 
national holiday so that it would be possible for more people to uh, actually come out and, and vote. However, all of the states, and it's the states are the ones who are really involved in setting up the elections, uh, all of the states do have uh, times. For instance, in uh, Ohio, the polls are open from 6.30 in the morning until 7.30 at night on Tuesday, and that will be true of November 8th, as it always is on Tuesday election days. Now, a very important date is coming up, especially for any of you out there who have moved or are not registered to vote and want to vote on November 8th. In order to vote on November 8th, you have to be registered to vote um, at the Board of Elections on, uh, this year it's October um, 8th, I believe it is, uh, which is exactly a month before uh, November 8th, which is Election Day. So, <laughs> you want to be sure, especially if you have moved, uh, since the last time you voted and have not changed your registration to your new address, it's very, very important that you be uh, signed up from your new address because you are expected to vote at the uh, address of, of your, uh, new, your new address rather than going to an old address. And as a matter of fact, the Board of Elections would probably know that you had moved, but they would not know where you had moved. That's because um, they always send out something. Um, it might be a postcard announcing the uh, upcoming election. This year, I think that uh, what they were counting on was uh, sending out to all the registered voters an application for um, uh, a ballot for those people who uh, are not planning to actually vote on Election Day, but want to vote before Election Day. And that is possible to do if you make out your absentee uh, ballot application form. Now, they have sent out, and I know that they have, because my husband and I have both received envelopes that have applications inside for um, an absentee ballot. We have always voted, actually, at our uh, current place of election, which for many, many years, indeed, has been City Hall. That's because we live downtown Athens in Ward 3, Precinct 3, and uh, City Hall is <clears throat> our election spot where our precinct votes. 3-1 uh, also votes uh, at City Hall in the same place, which I assume will be uh, upstairs in the uh, chambers of uh, the City Council on the third floor. There is also uh, another uh, election place, but I'm not sure what the precinct is, which is on the first floor. It's probably 3-2, but I don't know that for sure. So don't follow me out. If you don't know where you're supposed to uh, vote and you have not received any information, like someone who is recently registered should have received a card in the mail, which confirmed where you're supposed to vote, your precinct and, and so on, ward and precinct. Uh, Athens does have four wards, and each ward has a number of different precincts, and each precinct is, like I say, more or less in a different place, although some places, uh, some of these public places, have the room and the possibility of having more than one precinct, like we do at for three three, which Bob and I vote, or uh, also three one is 
traditionally in that same um, place. Now, if you don't know where you're supposed to vote, you still have time to find that out from the Board of Elections, which is uh, on South Court Street, right next to um, the county courthouse. On the ground floor there is the Board of Elections, um, just uh, south on uh, South Court Street and um, the people there can get you signed up. And after October 11th, after the last day of voting uh, application uh, for voting on your regular time on, October, on November 8th, after that, beginning I believe on October 12th, it is possible to vote absentee if you have been registered by October 11th. But I can't stress enough that it's very important that you uh, be registered to vote and you still have until Tuesday, October 11th, and they will be open until 9 o'clock in the evening for uh, people who work during the day and weren't able to get there. But uh, if you aren't registered to vote by then, uh, you're going to be out of luck. Uh, if you are registered by then, you will be able to vote after October 11th. You will be able to vote uh, absentee ballot by going to the Board of Elections or by sending in uh, an application for a, a, a an absentee ballot which they will send you in the mail but then you would have to be able to send it back fill it out and send it back by um, the election day by um, I guess you know like if you delivered it hand delivered it, it would be by 730 on November 8th because that is the deadline to receive all the uh, absentee ballots and to receive all the elected ballots from around the county uh, of Athens because each county has its own board of elections and which it sets up and has a um, board of elections that oversees the election and has permanent officials who work for the board of elections in Athens as I mentioned it's right next door to of the county courthouse on South Court Street in Athens. Now about uh, people who are registered to vote elsewhere, you'd better find out what the um, deadline is because it's certainly if you are from Cleveland or Cincinnati or Toledo and are expecting to vote absentee at one of those places, you have to have your application in by October uh, 11th and, and they would send it out to you but uh, you can't uh, that is to say if you are registered to vote I think you can send it in later but if you aren't registered to vote by October 11th from uh, Toledo or, or Cleveland or Cincinnati Columbus whatever and you want to vote especially in this important presidential election year you still would be able, say you were an Ohio University student and you wanted to vote in Athens, you could register at the Board of Elections here in Athens County because, that is assuming you've been a student for at least 30 days, which should certainly be the case if you started in late August uh, when Ohio University began the current uh, semester, uh, you should be able to uh, vote um, you should be able to register to vote right here in Athens and, and vote in your local precinct. And the Board of Elections, of course, would tell you where it is that you have to vote. Probably be somewhere sort of close to where you live, although it won't be just around the corner. I mean, for instance, we live off Mill Street and we vote at City Hall and, uh, of course, every other precinct votes in a different uh, a different location but um, you do want to make sure that you're registered to vote 
And I do want to uh, sort of warn people that there has been a, quite a purging of the roles. See, uh, if you supposedly, if you uh, voted uh, la last time and you haven't voted since, if you voted last time there was presidential election, which was 2012, and you have not moved, you're in, still in the same place, you should be registered to vote uh, at your current place where you voted the last time. But I understand that about two million names have been purged from the rolls in Ohio. And how do they do that? Well, of course, there are people who have moved, there are people who have died, and they have to make sure that the voting rolls are up to date and current. And so that's one reason why we have a whole month before uh, Election Day for the Board of Elections to get things ready for the vote and to make sure that the rolls are uh, current. Um, but <laughs> it's possible that some people have been um, accidentally knocked off and uh, if there's any question in your mind, you should uh, check with your Board of Elections, which as I mentioned here in Athens, if you're registered in Athens County, uh, is uh, at, uh, on South Court Street right next to the courthouse. I don't happen to have their phone number, but of course they have a phone number, which, which is in the book if you wanted to give them a call. I also want to point out that there will be on the ballot, in addition to the presidency, of course, there will be uh, a senatorial, Ohio senatorial uh, election between uh, uh, former governor and congressman Ted Strickland, who is the Democratic uh, candidate for U.S. Senator from Ohio, and the incumbent senator, uh, Rob Portman, who is a Republican. And uh, so that's a very important election there. Another very important election is for the state legislature. And here in Athens County, uh, we have uh, uh, Sarah Grace, who is the Democratic candidate, and uh, Jay Edwards, who is the Republican candidate for the state uh, of Ohio House or Assembly, the lower house. The reason being that Debbie Phillips, who has been our uh, State House representative for quite some time, in fact for uh, uh, eight years at least, uh, is term limited. She could not run again, and so um, there is no incumbent in the Democratic-Republican uh, race for the House in Athens County, and of course that district also includes Meigs County, parts of Washington, and Vinton County as well. So those are some of the things that I'm hoping that people will keep in mind as they consider the importance of voting on November 8th, Tuesday, between 6.30 and a.m. <laughs> and 7.30 p.m. Uh, if you are voting uh, at your local precinct. And that's why it's so important to have your address known so that your precinct can be assigned to you. And uh, uh, that is why they are very careful to have good up-to-date voting rolls. And you want to make sure that you are on that list especially if you have moved uh, since the last time you voted because they do send out uh, notices from time to time and this year they sent out absentee applications, absentee ballot applications to um, people who are on the list. And if those were returned to them unopened, they know that you have moved. <laughs> And, but they don't know where you've moved, and that's why you must visit the Board of Elections. And there are other places, like the libraries, where you can also register to vote. Ohio is a very good state in making it possible for people to vote. But you will need to take with you a 
um, uh, something, a driver's license is the best thing, which has your picture on it and your name and your uh, address. But if you are a student, you can get a special card from the university which uh, gives your local address um, or if you're an off-campus student you can take in f something like a gas or an electric bill which gives your name and local address on it as um, uh, a way of proving that you are an Athenian and, re and registered to vote uh, at the place that is listed on your, uh, and you could still vote a provisional ballot if you're not on that uh, list, but it's much better to be set ahead of time and be sure to vote uh, on November 8th, Election Day 2016. This is Lois Whaley for Women Today and Yesterday.